Babaji used to say, if you cannot be what you have to be, assume that you are already it. And then you will find that you become what it has to be. Assume that you are humble, no. And you will find that slowly the real humility comes into your being. Assume that you are hospitable no? and not somebody looking for a, you know, uh, quid pro quo when you offer a lunch. So we start with assumption in spirituality. In the same way we assume that in our art there is divine light. As Babaji said, it's a mere supposition. Assume that there is divine light in your heart. You can't see it, you don't know it is there. But assume it is there and meditate on it. You see? And then you will find as you continue to meditate and meditate, it is there. So by assuming with all your heart, with sincerity, you know, with constant application of effort, you make real that which you only assumed when you started your spiritual life. Then when that grows, you are assumed hospitality, you are assumed uh, civility, you are assumed humility, slowly become all natural to you. They must become natural, they cannot be artificial. We have these maxims, ten maxims, we have the discipline of Sahaj Marg, the moral code of Sahaj Marg, all of which are designed to make us perfect. And the perfection of that human being is that when an abhyasi approaches, often the Guru says Namaste before the abhyasi says Namaste. And nowadays the Guru does, the abhyasi does not understand what is happening. He thinks the Guru is greeting him first because he, the Abhyasi, is a great person or is an excellent person or is somebody to be welcomed with, the, you know, respect. It is the Guru's inner value of life that is exposing itself in every word, in every way of greeting, in every offer of hospitality that the Guru makes. No. When we come to the Saj Marg way, it must be explicitly understood, if not explicitly stated, that this is what I have to become. We cannot say, no, no, he is the Guru, you know. He can afford to be like that. I cannot be like that. In my work, I have to be arrogant, I have to be proud, I have to order people. I am so and so, I am such and such, you know, you cannot say it. You may be all that. But it's like a judge, as Babaji used to say, like God is the judge. He is the judge, no doubt, but he gives you whatever you have to be doing. That is why Kabir has said it is like the potter, the clay pot. He puts his hand inside and with a wooden mallet, he's shaping it. This bears the pressure of the wooden mallet while shaping it into a beautiful pot. So he is both the punisher and the one who bears the punishment from inside yourself. So God never gives us more than we can bear. It is impossible to say if you know spirituality in its true essence, that, oh, I'm unable to bear this, it's too much for me to bear. It's not possible. Because he never gives us more than we can bear. Whether it is pain or suffering or whatever. And when this comes, when this knowledge comes, understanding comes, we have love and reference for the Guru who is able to give us 
our treatment just to the extent that we can bear to become what he wants us to become. That is also a sign of humility. I know that he loves me so much that what he is making me go through is what I can go through with his grace, with his love, and it is for my good. This, a child does not know when it is sent to school. He does not want to go to school. It says, Mommy, I hate you. Daddy, I hate you, you know, all sorts of things. Everyone is knows. Everyone is familiar with all these things. But when you become a parent yourself and you face your child, saying, Mommy, I hate you, I don't want to go to school. You know why your parent did it to you, isn't it?